So, you know, we're all, we're all vulnerable to being manipulated for, um, for different reasons, to promote agendas. And, and really, science is about truth. It's not really about an agenda. And journalists need to get at the underlying truth and report it faithfully and honestly. Um, well, I'm going to... There does need to be better dialogue and better access. And it is true that many scientists are poor communicators because we're not trained in it. We're trained to handle test tubes. And then there are multiple agendas. And university press offices and journal press offices have the, um, have the goal of filling newspaper column inches. And they will put out stories that are in the best interests of the institution or the best interests of the journal, but are not necessarily important. And yet they're rammed down journalists' throats. And then the wood gets lost for the trees. If everything is a breakthrough, nothing's a breakthrough. So there needs to be more discipline. And again, like Laurie said, you know, this, when pigs fly, these things will happen. But there are many things that are put out in the press as aid stories that shouldn't really be there. They're, you know, bread and butter, run-of-the-mill stuff. But they fill column inches. And I don't know any answer to that. And then there are sensationalist stories that are put out. You know, the super virus that at New York was the big thing of about 18 months ago. Um, the final report on it was issued last week by the um, CDC and the MMWR and absolutely got no column inches. So what's out there is big sensation. You know, everyone in New York's going to die of this rapidly progressing virus. And the final outcome of the story was nothing. You know, there's, there's all sorts of bad stories out there and all sorts of good stories that don't get written, but it's an imperfect world and we're all responsible for that. But what I want to ask and, and I want, what I want to propose is should we be having a new ethic in journalism? Is it really the role of the media to challenge scientific consensus? Is it really the role of the media to say, well, the scientific consensus is wrong, the scientists have got it wrong? Um, my personal view is that it's almost impossible for the general media, for the mainstream media, to be able to override the scientific consensus. The scientific consensus, if it's wrong, is going to be challenged by scientists in scientific journals. It's not the role of journalists to be challenging the scientific consensus. Does the media have the expertise to challenge the scientific consensus? In my view, it doesn't. And that's something I think that we, would, we should, when we have the floor discussion, be asking. Should we be seeing... Uh, articles in the, in, the, in the general media that challenge uh, science. And, and in my view, it isn't the role of journalists to do that. Um, I want to just do a plug for AIDS Truth as well, just as uh, John did. And I hope uh, other people who are presenting at the conference will also do a plug for AIDS Truth. Thanks. Microphone three. Thanks very much. Uh, my name's Richard Horton, and I work at a medical journal. So before I start criticizing anybody else, I should just say I plead guilty to all of the things you say that journals are responsible for. It is an imperfect world. We do our best, and every week we make mistakes. Um, however, uh, I'd like to pick up on a couple of points, one from Nathan, one from Laurie. Nathan, you've raised a very interesting question about is ethics the problem? Should journalists refrain from challenging the scientific consensus? I think journalists should be challenging the scientific consensus every day. And I wish that journalists had challenged the scientific consensus on vials, on SSRIs being used in under-18s, and in all the instances of research which 18 months, two years or longer down the line turned out to be fraudulent. Because if it wasn't for journalists acting as a test of science that's published in journals such as the one I work for, The Lancet, then actually we don't have a balance of power in the way science gets reported. So please don't ask journalists not to challenge the scientific consensus. So that's the first thing. The second thing is Loris' point. Why is it? And, you know, back in the 90s, I remember spending time with Celia Farber and Peter Duesberg writing about what they were writing about for the New York Review of Books. And so why your question at the very beginning, why are we still doing this, is the one that we actually haven't answered in this session. And we should be looking to an answer for that question. Why has it survived? I think part of the reason is we're too polite. When Manto Shabalala Simang steps up onto a World Health Assembly panel in Geneva, she is listened to with deep respect. People don't walk off the panel. The Director General of WHO does not not invite her to that panel. He welcomes her. So part of the reason is we tolerate 
these dissenting views. We respect them and we actually pay tribute to them because those people who embody them are still invited to events and given a world stage. The day we stop doing that is the day we start to at least push that off the mainstream agenda. But part of the problem is also our responsibility in this room. Science reporting. You're right, John. We do put press releases out every week from journals. And you know what? It amazes me that journalists write those press releases up almost word for word in the newspapers the following day. Because science is treated not like politics or trade or industry or any other department of state. Science is treated as truth, that anything that's published in a journal has to be right. That's wrong. We publish stuff that's wrong every day. And the idea that science is about truth on a daily basis is a complete flaw. So I worry about you calling your website AIDS Truth. That creates an expectation. It fuels a myth that science is delivering truth on a daily basis. And we know it doesn't. All of us who've done science know it doesn't. So please let's be humble. Please let's be modest. But please, let's go out there and not be polite with people who we know are wrong. Thanks. Um, I actually I agree with almost everything you said in that, in that speech. I think you said very many really good points. And I certainly don't want to see um, general scientific consensus go unchallenged on many things. Certainly on the... Um, but, but on the fundamentals of whether HIV causes AIDS, I think it is so certain that that is a true statement 